Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Welcome to another Recovery Talks podcast. My name's Mandy Nunes, and I'll be your host today. And I am really excited about our guests today. I have Chase and Stacy with us today, and I have known them for quite a long time. We all went through treatment court together and have just built these amazing lives. And we've not spent a ton of time together outside of that in person, but we've both watched each other's um, recovery and lives unfold, you know, the last, you know, five to seven years. And they have just done amazing things with their recovery journey. And they've chosen you know, after the time they spent healing them sp- themselves, they have chosen to move forward and to spend this time helping to heal other people. And mm-hmm. I just think that what they do and everything that they have been through and their stories are so inspirational. I knew that I had to have them on the podcast. So welcome. Yeah, I was just going back in my mind and it's been seven years I'm celebrating my seventh year June 17th so it was in the fall when I got brought back in drug court had a little hiatus and then came back in and so yeah it's been seven years yeah and I March yeah congratulations yeah I am coming up on in November I'll have I'll have eight years, but I had a relapse in there while I was in treatment court. So I was in, I've been in there longer, but yeah. 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 Still. Yeah. I stumbled a few times and it just, uh, I'm so grateful for the drug courts to be able to hold space for me. And, and we talk about that a lot, um, in their ability to just have compassion and and understand. So. Yeah. 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 It was. A profound experience for me as well. I don't think that I would be no. where I'm at today if that wasn't a piece of my journey. I think that it really helped for me lay the foundation that I needed to to start building the rest of my life on top of. I okay. don't think that a 28 day or 30 day treatment program. Um, would have done for me what 22 months in drug court did for me. Yeah, absolutely. We say it's long bouts of treatment. So when we're helping people and I'm talking to families and talking to, you know, people that are struggling with this, a lot of that belief system is 30 days is going to cure it. And I'm like, no, that doesn't even, no, no, no. It's That's a, a in the door, right. right. To kind of give you some tools to get you yeah. through. But yeah. Yeah, that's a hardcore belief system. Some maybe yes, but just be prepared to do this. Well, we treat it every day, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And and that's also what they don't understand is it's it's like taking your medicine every day if you have a disease, right? Right. And that's what it is. It's telling your mind something very different than what it's giving you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that comes practice I think of having long bouts of treatment too right like you're not going to get the experience and the practice in 30 days that you do in 22 months right, right? incorporating right, right. All those different pieces yeah. mm-hmm. right right and recovery I mean when you really break it down and you look at recovery or, or at least me looking backwards on what my recovery journey has been um it it evolves and it changes and looking back, I've realized that really recovery is about wellness, right? It's not about stopping the use of substances, although that plays a part, right? Right. It, It really is about all of the different things, all of the different choices I make on a daily basis, like you said, 
to improve my wellness or maintain my wellness. It, and it's about the whole person, right? It's not just about my mental health or my substance use, right? My physical health plays a role in that. My emotional health, my spiritual health, my financial health, right? All of those pieces play a role in, in who we are and how we feel and how we choose to go forward and, and behave and think and feel and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I agree. Yeah. So I brought you guys on today. I have gotten to watch Stacy and Chase, you know, over the last many months, you know, go through probably something that has been one of the most challenging, hardest, emotional things that they've probably gone through that, that I could imagine. And I've watched both of you face it head on and be so open and so vulnerable publicly mm -hmm. about that journey. And you have both handled it with such grace and such compassion for yourselves mm -hmm. on that journey. And um, it's been a huge inspiration to me. And I just wanted to bring you both on and talk about what that journey has been like for you as humans, as people in recovery. Wild, <laughs> a right? A lot. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about the last close to a year? Yeah. 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 So go back before, before our diagnosis that summer, I think was probably the best summer, the best year, the best our lives have been because we really kind of got to sit back and yeah. taste the fruit of our labor yeah. right and see because I think it started in like February or March mm -hmm. I had this I don't know like it was well this... it was back up even a year before that oh yeah we had she found like this little lump I, I, and it had been there it, it mm -hmm. was there was even a lump there when I was in um passages right mm -hmm. when I was in jail mm -hmm. and I had it removed in 2016 and and went up on it was a lumpectomy right it was not cancerous but yeah. then it grew mm -hmm. and I'm like <laughs> we all thought it was scar tissue yeah. right from where they had put the incision and then boom we've got another one and then we were gonna go well, get it looked at yeah. and uh, Stacy's mom ended up getting sick with COVID. Almost died. Almost died. So it kind of postponed our everything trip. We set right? everything, we everything down. Down for that. And then yeah. the next, my son wrecked on his bicycle and smashed his head. Right. We found a what is it called a um, little arachnoid cyst on his brain. Right. It's big. Yeah, it's huge. And August ninth, I'll never forget. Did, yeah. You and looked then, at in the same time, we had to like figure we would just kill two birds with one stone right. by getting her stuff checked out. Like, too. you know, this is getting really big. And then boom, I, there was another bump. And so that uh, the two weren't there the whole time. The one was, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then in August, I'm like, wow, there's another one right there. I better, it's been almost a year. I need to get in. Mm -hmm. And going through our summer of everything lining up right we have our children we have our business we're connecting deeper than we ever have we are feeling the frequency as high as it can be in the abundance of things I was going to turn 40 in October I'm like I'm in my prime I'm ready to go and then boom on Labor Day weekend I went in to get um, just checked and it's interesting to know, like I have faced fear, right? Uh, many people that struggle with addiction have, right? Mm -hmm. I've faced many things that in those moments you just move through, right? Yeah. And it was so interesting because when they said they wanted to biopsy it. I knew in that moment, because there's been several years now that I have felt like there was something in my body that was cancerous and it's wild being an intuitive, you know, people ask me, didn't you know? And I'm like, yeah, I did know. 
and and I just did it how I was supposed to, and I believe that to my core. And they took me back in the room, and it was crazy because when I was fifteen, I was sexually assaulted by a thirty-year-old man, and it was brutal. And we tried him, and he was convicted. And then when I was 15, uh, Ella Dugan was my uh, psychologist. And she was this beautiful human that in those moments helped me um, feel grounded and safe and secure. And you guys, when I walked through the door, there's a bunch of doctors, the room was full. And that's how else I knew that it was different from the time before. I could, t- I could feel it. I'm like, Oh, here we go. They're just going to take it out though. It'll be fine. And I walk through the doors. You guys, Ella Dugan is right there. Wow. And I, Before I went yeah. in, I'm like, I know I will have all the people, the doctors, everyone that I need to help me through this. Right. And there she was tears, crying, embracing, um, 25 years here. She's boom, right in the same position in one of my scariest moments. Yeah. And so I mean, your two scariest moments in your yeah. life right. that happened. She was the one who was your advocate and kind of helped mm-hmm. you. Yeah. She's incredible. She's an incredible mm-hmm. human being. So we had biopsies. They took mm-hmm. nine. Wow. Brutal. Yeah. And we went home. And the doctor, before I went home, you know, kind of looked at me and said, we're pretty sure we have to yeah, check. Yeah. He's, and he was all shaky in his voice. I'm sitting there like, please, please just tell me because he was shaky kind of. And I could, I could tell they know they do this all the time. Right. And so I just, before he even was going to say whatever he was trying to say, I just said, it's okay. I know. I know I just go home now and then we wait. And he said, I will, I will do the best I can. And when I get it, I will let you know. And we were going into what is it? Labor day weekend. Yeah. We were headed for the cab. Right. So it's a long weekend. And this was a Wednesday that I went. And the next day we're packing. It was somber. Right. Mm -hmm. Callie, our little five-year-old was there and guys, we have a big family. We have, Chase and I, four kids, five kids when my daughter from Idaho comes to visit. So it's wild all Mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, plus the dogs, the chickens, the cats, like the whole shebang, right? We've set up responsibility in so many ways. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see what you did here. We need to stay sober, have so much responsibility. Yep. Um, And so all day, it was very quiet between Chase and I. And then, oh, I'm having a hot flash. So watch this. I turn bright red. And we got the call. I yelled for Chase and Callie came out and it was the doctor and I put it on speaker and it was quick. I said, hello. And he goes, is this Stacy? And I said, yes. And he said. Are you sitting down? Yeah. And I said, yes. And he goes, you know, there's no great way in saying this, but they did come back and it is cancer. Mm. Ugh. It's it's like you lose cabin pressure, right? Yeah. And your whole world just stops. Oh. Everything stops. Mm-hmm. You wow. know, your chest is going to collapse. You don't know. And I said, I, and I go, I don't want to die. Right. Yeah. And I, we, when we talk about this with people, I explain, mm-hmm. I think I've, oh my gosh, I've always had one foot here and one foot back to where we're from. La- okay. In 2022, before all of this, I remember looking at Jay saying, I'm here. I feel good. Right. I'm, I'm finally safe and secure and I'm grounded my needs are taken care of right I'm filled with abundance I'm embracing things in my life and so that's kind of new that just came to me and then boom here six months later I'm finally in a position Mm -hmm. where in my life I have overdosed 
I have been there. I have traveled to the next, right? Wanted to. There were times that I felt like I know where I'm going. Please just take me. Yeah. You know, whether it was like physical abuse or whatever was happening, yeah. I remember many times thinking, oh, don't even bring me back. I'm good. Yeah. And at that moment when the doctor said that, I was so scared that these are my final moments, right? This is my final year, everything. And my body started to shake and it didn't stop like shaking. Shake, like, mm-hmm. un- like yeah. couldn't stop yeah. the shake. Yeah. We loaded in the car and we didn't know what kind of cancer it was. We didn't know. You and know. it was Labor Day weekend. So we're sitting through a long weekend of like, hey, guess what? You got cancer. We'll see. You yeah, it was. It was horrible. And we're connected to a lot of people. So mm-hmm. I've done, you know, my I've have these gifts, and for the last thirteen years, I have given, you know, intuitive readings professionally for thirteen years, and I'm busy every day, right? I'm working. I mean, I was doing three, you know, readings a day, which energetically it's a lot, mm-hmm. and we're just connected to so many people that right away I thought you've got to be, I felt it. You've got to be open and and vulnerable and transparent with people because they're going to want to know where you're at, right? You can't go into this hole and (laughs) stay there. And so our closest people knew they were all at the house, right? where kids are getting out of school within 10 minutes. Yeah, our kids oh. walked into just an emotional mess, right? Callie, little. Callie yeah. ran and hid. She she went and We couldn't her find her. It was traumatic. Her. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it was a traumatic experience for all of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you did, through throughout your journey, you did stay really open and... Yeah and vulnerable and transparent i mean you shared it with the whole world when yeah you shared and and i i mean i i i don't have cancer and breast cancer is one of the few cancers that doesn't actually run in my family there's a lot of cancer that does Um, yeah yeah but i feel like i learned so much about you as a human and about breast cancer over the next many months because you mm-hmm. would do Facebook lives and just share mm-hmm. everything that you were going through. And I, you know, and I watched so many of your lives and just my heart just went out to you. And also I just was so inspired yeah. by you at hey. the same time. Yay. So my and is people, right? And I sit with people all day long and I sit with them in their darkness. And even in my addiction, I knew in that experience, there was purpose. And that purpose really was, if I can sit in my darkness and look at it and embrace it, really, then I can sit in the darkness of others and I can help them to the light. And so my life has very much portrayed just that. And I learned a lot from my last, right? Because we call it a death and rebirth and they really are. And the last one was when I was in my addiction. And I learned so much there that I used that knowing, right? And faith. And what I didn't want to do through this one, what I wanted to make sure I did, and that helped kind of lay the pavers of what went on. And I've learned if I'm transparent, if I am open, it also, there's a level of like accountability and ownership of this is what I'm doing. Just very much about my addiction too. I really like to educate people about that. And same with this. And it was raw. I mean, it yeah. was, there were t- 
times that opening up and allowing people to feel that and see it, I knew there was going to be purpose that everyone can take from this um, and place it somewhere in their lives. You know, I get messages all the time from people that I don't even know that have said, so many I've messages. watched your lives. They've helped me. My mother died of breast cancer. I understand what she went through now. I didn't, because we don't talk about that. We well, don't we're talk about that, right? We're taught to just keep mm -hmm. that to yourself. Yeah. You don't, people still yeah. let them see you cry, right? Yeah. And it's like this world system that people have. And know. I hate, I struggle with being a victim. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Even through my addiction and recovery, I didn't want to be a victim. And, and this part for me was, you're going to allow people to help you. You're going to open yourself up and, and know that this is about receiving where we punish ourselves so much, right. In that we don't deserve that. And so I opened myself up and I'll tell you, there were times that I was so low and down that just going on there and being able to allow people to hold me in that space helped so much. We had no idea how many people, no, no you know, loved us and loved our family. And so, yeah. 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 I, like, the pictures, right. When they, when they, I mean, I had six wow. rounds, I should say that six rounds of brutal chemotherapy. It was really hardcore chemotherapy two two chemos and we did six rounds of that and the very first round was September 21st and I also got COVID the first round I'm like oh my gosh and the so I was super sick yeah wipes right. everything out from you so I I got COVID the first round and we were like well maybe we're just we just want to be so miserable in that, that <laughs> the rest should be okay. Well, we've learned not to say that because I'm like, okay. And then right before my second round, I had beautiful blonde, right? My mane. This is mm -hmm. pieces of identity of mine that yes. linked to my femininity, right? Um, mm -hmm. This beautiful mane of hair. And I'm going to brush it. And it's, I mean, they're no doubt like huge chunks. chunks. So then we shaved my head and here I go, right? We're going to go live. We're going to do it because I don't want to sit in my darkness by myself. I want to share this. And it was terrifying to have to, it was as if these pieces of me were just being ripped away and even in addiction right we understand that things being ripped away from our children our family friends homes like it's brutal and I shaved my head and I was like you are a badass I'm like oh my yeah, god still feeling like a warrior badass, right? right like it's okay we're good yeah. we can do this yeah and it was amazing. I looked at our kids the next day and we had a track meet and I said, listen, I'll put the wig on. We had really cute wigs that I'd wear every once in a while. They were fun. But I, I looked at every one of them and said, listen, I, mom will not be upset at all. If you want me to wear this wig, I will do it. And I don't want to. And I understand if you need me to. And they all looked at me and they said, no, mom, yeah. go. Yeah. Go with your bald head. That's you right. look awesome. Like GI Jane. We're proud. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So... I remember. I remember yeah. you shaved your head and I, I've thought a lot about, you know, your journey and, and how, you know, when I think about what would that be like for me? And I, and I don't think it's something that that a person can actually imagine. I don't think you know what it's going to be like for you unless you're actually going through it, but to lose those pieces of our identity, like the things that society has told us for so long, that this is what makes you a woman, that this is what makes you beautiful mm -hmm. to lose your beautiful hair, to lose your breasts. 
how, you know, what it's like to go through that. And you shared so much of that openly. Um, and you just, I remember this video of you and it was after you had had your double mastectomy and you, you know, had, had shared what, what you look like, you yeah. know, without breasts. Moments and, after, boom. Yeah. Like yep. shell- I remember you saying like, yes, it's hard. It's hard sometimes, but I looked at myself in the mirror today naked and mm-hmm. I felt so much love for my body and yeah. so much gratitude for my body for bringing me through this. And I just thought how beautiful I look. And I almost cried watching you as you shared that live to just see the beauty radiating out, radiating out of you, not in spite of all of that, but because of it. And just the compassion that you had for yourself in those moments and the way that that so powerfully kind of said F you to society standards in that moment. And I just, so inspiring. I just want you to know that. Thank you. That was, um, you know, through this, we knew, gosh, it's wild. We knew that there were, um, things that were going to go right. And we just, we just go through them. Right. When we're there, we're there. Well, after chemo and chemo was so brutal. I was so sick through that. My nails rotted and were falling Mm -hmm. off. I mean, terrifying, terrifying things that you would never, I mean, all the things that I used to maybe even see in someone and be like, oh my gosh, what's happening there? Now I know. I'm like, okay, I got it. Um, But we were preparing for the mental, right? Peace with when they did the surgery, you know, Chase and I threw all the things and because you have to check in, you have to be vulnerable and honest about where you're at and what you're feeling. And the mental piece of it, it was like a gift because when I looked at myself, which of course, if I've struggled with my body and accepting myself a hundred percent, I still am right. I think it's, but in that moment and seeing my wounds and seeing I have, I am completely bare. I have no eyelashes. I have no hair, no eyebrows. My fingernails are falling off. Like I was such here. We're at this layer. We peeled them back literally. And I'm looking at myself and my body and it just hit me how much love it gets up and does for us every single day. And I have heard it so badly and talked to it so badly and not given it the nutrients it needs and demanded it to do these things. And here I'm standing in the mirror and I'm like, wow, thank you. We have been through hell and back, homie. We are good, right? Like we are solid. I got you. And I'm going to talk to you now and we're going to do all the things, right? Um, yeah, because going into it, September 21st, first chemo, I could feel I was grieving. My body had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. It was and doing all the things. It had no clue that what was, was going to run through me. Yeah. And chemo has a different energy, right? Radiation has a different energy. The cancer has a different energy. And even the cancer had no freaking idea, right? It's just sitting there, coffee, reading the newspaper, right? Multiplying all the children, you know, to grow this little city. It had no idea. And that was part of my body. So even, you know, knowing that and saying, I'm so sorry, you got to go though, right? But yeah, it was, it was incredible. This whole thing has been um, eye-opening and 
And I wanted to share, you know, in my life, I, uh, I have, I knew I was going to do some big things, right? I knew I was going to bust through people's opinions and belief systems about addiction. I knew that that was that purpose, right? That I felt even then. So now when I'm going through this, I'm like, well, yeah, of course I'm going to do that too, right? Like, of course I'm going to help people love themselves right where they're at, but my capacity grew. And I know all we're doing as humans is growing this capacity. It's yeah. pushed through. And so honoring that is what I'm doing and helping other people too. Like we can bust through that. We don't have to stay here. We don't have to stay small or little, right? No, this is big. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking about, right, recovery, like recovery from substance use disorder, um, and getting this big diagnosis, I know that for a lot of people going through something like this can, can be, um, devastating to their recovery, right? Because there's that desire to run from it, to numb it. And right, like Let's just is... be real honest. And I think I've talked about it on my lives. I, in those moments, and I'm not, I'm not shitting you. This is how powerful our mind is. This is how it like sits there and waits, right? For the opportunity. Absolutely. I thought, wow, here's my ticket going back, right? I'll have all the opiates I, I need, all that I want, mm -hmm. right? This is an excuse for me to be back in that space and use with permission, yeah, right? Absolutely. From doctors, yeah. from anything. Like if you've ever had a reason here. Yeah, here we it. are. Hey, Go ahead. Here's Nobody's your ticket. We're going to ride it. No yeah. one is. Yeah. And I remember saying it to Chase immediately. I, I'm very good about speaking it because then the moment I speak it, I'm able to then process it and it, I'm not holding on to it as much. Right. And in that moment, I was being asked to show my growth. I knew that I was going to have to, oh God, yeah. And it makes me just emotional because everything that I worked for, yeah. my kids, my husband, my family, our home, the animals, like <laughs> I didn't want to have to lose that. And it was a choice right there. And we're, but I, I'm finally at a space where that choice is going to come for people. And when you're in recovery this long, I do feel like we can sit there and see both ways, both timelines of this going. And I, I can't lose, you know, that ever again. And I used to say, if I relapse, I'm going down, right? Like there ain't no, I'm, I'm going. And so I'm like, oh, well, you're dying anyways, here my mind, right? Yeah. No. So we've done very well with it. And it's so crazy because even when I did have to have, you know, opiates and do that, because we knew there, especially with the surgeries that we were going to have to do that. You guys, I took what? Eight of them, eight and then done. It didn't even, I was so proud of myself that even getting them, it did not feel like it did. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is maybe just my evolution of it, or it wasn't supposed to, like it knew, but yeah, like, oh, bye. bye. Right. Like <laughs> You're on the other side. Yeah. I think for me, there have been a couple of times, um, in my recovery, I'm also 
for those of you that don't know, I'm also a recovering opiate addict. And there have been a couple of times when I had my partial hysterectomy, I was prescribed opiate pain medication. There's been another time. Um, but the same, you know, that both fear and excitement at the right. same time, right? Yeah. This is my drug of choice and I get to use it and it's okay. Um, yeah. and, oh my gosh, I don't want to lose everything again. Yeah. Um, it didn't feel the same. I agree with right? you. We are different humans right. than we were. And we don't, I think the difference for me is that back then my life wasn't mm. full and healthy and loving and fulfilling and safe. And so I had something that I needed to escape from and right. opiates were that escape for, for me. And now I've built a life that I don't need or want to escape from. And so it's different. It's just yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. I used to say in my addiction all the time that I fell in love with meth, right? It was an intimate relationship. It was something that was always there for me when I needed it, right? I didn't have to convince it that it needed to be there for me, right? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And then when we find recovery and we rebuild our lives, we fall yeah. in love with the people around us and we fall yeah. in love with our lives and we don't have to have that intimate relationship with substances anymore because we have true intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe, right. Like that is, um, it wasn't even an option, right. There were other things that I can do right through this. And I remember doing a live saying or a post, geez, I think I'm just supposed to feel the pain, right? Yeah. And it was feeling that and accepting it, embracing it, submitting to it. It was um, November 10th when I did that. And I, I just fell into it, right? Okay, yeah. And that was another thing. People, marijuana, right? So here comes that option right away, right? Here's medical marijuana. Oh my, what a shit show. I am not in that at all. So we tried. I, and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I couldn't, the panic that set over me. And then I'm like, oh wow, I'm in pain. And now in a horrible anxiety attack. Like this is not working, right? It was not working. And so that, because that was never my, my drug of choice, right? Mine was heroin, opiates, meth, and it was just not good. I'm like, no, nope, because- yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a controversial topic a little bit, but I think, you know, for for those people that it works for and they can find relief, what? that's wonderful. Again, it's it's not going to work for everybody. And how much more scary is that for us as people in recovery when yeah. there are options, right? So I have opiates, which are my drug of choice and yeah. do carry this very heavy physical dependence that mm -hmm. ends in excruciating oh. All those things that we never want to go through again, right? No. And, and cannabis, right? Which may or may not work, doesn't have as many withdrawals, so, you know, and those are, it's like sitting there mm -hmm. going, what's my best option? And then going, okay, and cannabis doesn't work for me. I don't want to have the panic. Yeah. Wow. And it was, um, honestly, there were, I wanted it to, to maybe feel like, you know, the opiates would, I know that feeling and it came, I mean, constantly throughout this, how easy would it be to, to do that? Oh, I could use, this as an option, but, but, but there was so much pain in different areas of pain. Mm -hmm. Like there's oh, so oh. many layers, right? It was so hard to, you can't put a singular emotion <laughs> or a singular feeling on it at all. And I tell people too, because we connect to quite a few people, whatever you need to do is the right way to do it, right? Like mm -hmm. this is 
I am doing it this way. And that doesn't mean that it, that you have to, because there is a lot with that and people just want to help, right? People just want to help that when they're saying, no, ask for pain stuff, ask for pain. They have no idea that this is tethered to a pretty, a side of myself that I, I see her and she's there, but she's not running the show. I don't want that tether to pull her forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the other thing that I really got to see between you two or see Stacy Express and, and Chase Express too is how this has affected your marriage, getting to see Chase show up for you um, in ways that you probably hoped he would never have to, um, and and having that piece. And then also, you said earlier, Stacy, like, I'm almost 40 and I'm in my prime and we felt more intimate and connected than ever. And then you go through all of this stuff and you're very ill and you yeah. lose your identity a little bit. And then you also ended up having a full hysterectomy and you're starting to go through menopause. So how has this affected your marriage? Um, you know, and that both, both emotionally, intimately, right. Getting to, getting to love her and care for her chase as she's been sick and what that did to you emotionally. And then also getting through the changes and how this has affected your sex life. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of roll with the punches, honestly. Like you don't know what you're doing, you know. So I I will say this. I'll start it off and then okay. I'll let you talk because or yeah. else I'll talk over him like crazy. Because okay. I love vibes. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, now in the moments of getting the biopsy, it was maybe seven days, right? I knew because Chase and I met in treatment, right? Mm -hmm. I was walking down a hallway, just getting done doing three months, right? Of intense inpatient treatment, um, going back into IOP. It's my first go round. I'd been there before. I had my same LAC and I'm walking down a hallway and my angel said, that's him. And I turned around and I saw Chase and I watched him that whole night and observed this man that had been through horrible experiences in how he was raised and what he went through. I saw a man with so much love and compassion to the world that was also trying to be masculine though and trying to be this, this part. And I, it was so funny because we talk about him like, you are not a gangster, dude. Don't even go, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I didn't understand then because it took a lot, right? He has three boys. He has full custody of. I didn't have my daughter. I, I let the twins go to adoption. Like there was a lot that we were coming into in this. And I trusted it and the court even knew. So when we told the court, I was pregnant with Callie, our little Callie, and we knew she was coming. And when we told the courts, Judge Gustafson and Shelly were like, oh, we've, we've known, we've been watching you guys. And it, the court, like, they didn't take that from us. Judge Gustafson said, let's watch them and help them through this because she thought you know, taking away from each other, it would have caused a lot with our sobriety, and right? Recovery, and yeah. recovery. Mm -hmm. So that was it. And in the moments of the biopsy, I knew, I am I knew why he was it and why he was brought to me. So there was never a doubt yet in that. And even sitting here now, I know why, right? And yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And like I said, I don't, you don't, 
I can't imagine doing anything else, right? Like I can't imagine what the other side of that ticket looks like not being here, not being there to be able to support her through that. And there was times when on the inside, you're screaming, Mm. right? Like for just anywhere to put this, but you have to like, just save face, right? You have to just kind of be present in that moment. And it was hard because you can't, there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. right so your brain tries to conceptualize everything that's happening it's like please you you have to make sense of this you have to what can you do to help and then to realize that there's nothing mm-hmm. like this is all I can do is this right here right like I hear you I see you right it's defeating and it's it's hard especially for somebody like me when I'm like I have solutions to everything that's what I do all day long yeah. right I run through scenarios in my head all day long I, I come up with solutions to problems and fix them right he holds space for all of us he is so strong and so loving and we've harnessed that our relationship has been based off transparency because we started in treatment so Mm -hmm. here we go boom here's everything this is why though is so we can we don't hide anything from each other even if it's things that have been uncomfortable but there are truth right we we open that And when you begin this, when you go through the cancer journey, I just told him this yesterday or the day before, because I'm feeling angry, right? I'm feeling sadness. I'm grieving. But when you're told that you have cancer in those moments, you will do anything. I would have gone in those moments to start chemotherapy. If they had to take my legs, take my legs, go ahead, let's do it. Let's get it done today. Now that I am 10 months into this and I am healing and I am coming forward in my new self and embracing that, I now see what I traded. And because my cancer was fed by estrogen, they've had to completely block out all of the estrogen hormones. And it's not even like just that, right? There, there can't be any, right? So chemo totally took any ability for me to get pregnant or produce. Mm -hmm. I had a partial hysterectomy in 2019, but but we kept the ovaries, right? So we didn't for hormones. And now I I'm, I'm looking around, looking at my husband, <clears throat> Chase is five years younger than me. I was excited for this, right? I'm like, wow, our kids are getting older. We can do so many fun things, right? And the whole year before was about connecting, sharing intimacy, going to different levels, feeling safe, right? To open that, my gosh, think about the things that have been done to me that it's painful. Chase has healed me in those and has walked me through. And then here we're at this point. And now, guys, it's wild. It is not just crickets. It is the only time I feel anything or or allow that is when I'm shaming myself, right? And we talked about this. I'm like, oh my God, you're you're what is wrong with you? You can't just embrace your husband. You can't share that with him. And I mean it, it's like the most uncomfortable feeling and it was part of the trade. So in order to do this, we traded this. Now, do I feel like we'll come to a time where we can connect and explore that yes every day am I like wow you you really gotta dig deep there like this is just another level of depth that we gotta go and I'm catching my breath because it is a lot and he is the kindest most Mm -hmm. loving do you know that 70 percent I think it is of relationships do not survive cancer. Is that sad? That's but super sad. now I can see now in 
wow, this has changed me, right? I'm a completely different person that I don't know, we're trying to change belief systems of the masculine and feminine and, you know, do these, these bring forward awareness and chases that for the masculine. And he really does just hold me in my fire and embrace me. And I am so grateful. I have a partner like him because there's times that I'm like, what am I doing? You guys are fine. It's just like you have a business partner now. What are we doing? I'm at, you know, I'm going to turn into a Viking, right? Because they're taking everything away, right? They're taking my, all of the essence, right? Of my femininity. It's the last trade, right? They took my hair. They took my breasts, my uterus, and now my essence, but I'm still a woman, right? I'm still embracing being sexy right and not you know having my breasts it's interesting it's a roller coaster because sometimes I don't I'm really proud of it and you can't even tell but then there's other times that I look at myself and I'm like wow there's pieces of me that I really loved that were traded for me to live this way but but what is it we have to find that again, because right now sitting in the trade, I'm like, wow, this is wild. I don't want to just keep doing the same thing every day, but we have to find a, a deeper level now. And we know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But most don't even talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I just appreciate you both coming on and being so willing to have these conversations Oh, and be so open and vulnerable, um, you know, with the world, with our <laughs> listeners, with me, and share your story because I think that this will help people. This will help people on their journeys, whether it's a recovery journey or a cancer journey or just a life journey. Your guys's relationship and how you've chosen to move through the challenges of life and share that with other people, it gives other people the opportunity to see something that's worked for, for, for both of you. And not everybody has that in their lives. Not everybody has the opportunity to see how people have chosen to go deep and show up for each other and love each other and take on the challenges and go with the flow and embrace the pain and, and, bring forth a new identity. And so I'm really grateful that you guys, you know, agreed to come on and do this podcast. Of course. Yeah. This was great. I love to be able to, um, in like 2019, I said to myself, I'm like, you know, I'm ready to like share my story. I'm ready to just step into this space where I, I don't have shame. I, I want to help people understand humans better. Man, has it done that mm -hmm. completely, not just with my addiction, but I feel like it takes a village. It takes people. It takes compassion. It takes holding someone right in the spot where they're at, not wanting to change them, right? Just giving them love. And I am grateful for Chase and what he has done too as a father, as a husband, as a man. It is so beautiful because I mean it. I feel like if I didn't have him and I say that's pretty defeating, but it would have been so different. And so I'm I'm taking this like radical accountability for my life, everything that's happened, all of these experiences. And I say, I wouldn't trade, trade places. Now I wanted to trade places that first day, right? I yeah. say that, oh my God, we're at the gas station. I'm looking at these people going in to get their pistachios. And I'm like, why am I not the farmer in the Ford truck that's 56? He's balding. I'll take that. I'll take that body, right? It was crazy. It was crazy. And now I, I, I feel like, oh no, mm -hmm. no, 
this is powerful. And there was great purpose in this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we love when you said this, I was like, oh, hell yeah, that will be great. Yes. Yes. Do you both want to share a little bit about the work that you do with helping others heal? Sure. I just think that's an important piece too. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that both of your, you know, your businesses and what you do for a living also helps other people. And so I also want our listeners to hear Mm -hmm. about that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I am an intuitive. I have had this gift my whole life and I am called what they call is a channeler. And so I channel um, spirit guides. Spirit guides are just like us. They're souls that have been down here and had human experiences. And everybody has a group of spirit guides to help them with all the external things. Um, And then the other group that I communicate with, the best way to describe them is as angels. And they have told and taught me that, you know, when that soul is born or formed, we know now it's energy that never dies. And they have shown me that they connect to it in those moments and they never leave. So if we're here being a crazy human, right, for a short existence of the soul, if we are back where we're from, if we're in a different dimension, they are with us. And so I see, feel, and hear message. And I'm telling you, it is the most profound Every single person I sit with and I do this every day, it is beautiful. They can take every single experience that we've gone through and bring light and love and purpose. And there's no, um, there's nothing that we can't, you know, understand and go through. And they're great. They tap into like what you've done in the past, what you're doing right now, what's coming up. Um, they're amazing. So they'll, they'll, I don't even know. Yeah, it's great. In an hour, it's like, wow, all of this information. Yeah. Sitting there with your mind blown. It is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm a shadow work practitioner. So I deal with frequencies, vibrations, traumas, um, trauma stores itself in your body, right? We've had those conversations where it has nowhere to go. So it manifests itself inside your body somewhere, right? And I help people peel back those layers and look at them and kind of allow that energy that's stuck on your timeline that's sitting there reliving moments over and over and over again to be, to free flow, right? So it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to stay there. Um, Keeping your energy movable through your body is so important. And Mm -hmm. some of the ways I do that's with Reiki, uh, sound bowls and breath work. Mm -hmm. So breath work is amazing. It's our life force. It's something that we have to have in order to live. And it's something we take for granted every single day. Mm. Right. So, so true. Yeah. Yeah. Chase, Chase goes to the shadow. And so you've heard me kind of say some experiences that I've had and that he will go back. We went back and his spirit guides are the ones that said, and his angels, this is your gift. This is what you need to be doing. It was wild. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, And so he will go back to those experiences that we've had that are traumatic, where we've had to be primal, right? Use the primal part of the mind. And after that brings dysfunction, right? When we have to do that because it's coming forward, it's not our true person. And so he walks back to those with you. And so and most of the time go all the way back, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the so when we're shadow little. work is kind of pulling everything up by the root, not just giving us mm-hmm. extra water, right? Um, and I've, I've not sat with a lot of people that didn't have to go back to when they were four or five years old mm-hmm. right? little bitty. Yeah. and, and do that inner child healing. These yeah. people that he's worked with and helped leave the most beautiful reviews and Chase and I will both do it. We've kind mm-hmm. of combined forces. And so you get a reading and you get channeling and you get some energy, work. energy work and healing. It's, it's profound. It is, it really I is. said, I wouldn't like, I, I am so passionate about helping people and I didn't do it when I was down and I was so down, depressed down I mean like, sub four it was crazy depressed. because of the medications it's silence we always joke we're like this 
these pieces of disabilities that people have, I feel like are gifts. And I've said that for a while. So ADHD, right? Autism. And we, for years, I've said, if I was diagnosed with anything, a disability, it would be multiple personality disorder and schizophrenia. And I'm like, I have just learned to harness this and I know what it is and I've had a safe place to look at it. But people, I, I do feel like our disabilities, which I've helped sit with people through them and we can find out what is really going on. And yeah, so some of the medications that they were giving yeah, me were antipsychotics. Uh, so they had to give her that. And Stacy, she described it best. She goes, it's like, it's like having a big family, right? Mm -hmm. Or a family reunion when everybody's staying at your house and you've got people there that you like, you got people there that you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. But no matter what, it's, it's busy, busy all right? the time. She goes, and then coming downstairs and nobody's home. Yeah, it was like waking up one day and it's the house empty. is There's empty. There, right? there was nothing, you guys, like this. Imagine. It was, I was grieving. I was experiencing already this traumatic stuff that mm -hmm. to have that on top of it. So here's my husband. He pulls out my medications and is doing all the work and finding all the things. And it was to treat schizophrenia. I'm like, oh, that absolutely explains, right? Yeah. Absolutely. What I've thought. And so we kind of debunk all the things that are told about us and we change it into, nope, these are our superpowers. And this yeah. is this is how we can harness it in the light. So yeah, That's it's so cool. I love that. And how, if if somebody was interested in a reading or shadow work, how would they get in touch with you? Facebook, like yeah. our Facebook pages are our main yeah. source of communication with people. I have a Facebook page called The Realignment. Um, Stacy has one that's called Montana Medium. Yes. Right. And you can access both of those. You type them in a little search bar. They're the mm -hmm. first ones that pop up. So, and I also have just learned to like my people are my people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can just friend me, Stacy Schumer, mm -hmm. and message me through there and oh, yeah. look that Absolutely. way too. And yeah, Chase, page. Yeah, sure. spelled Chaz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, there's okay. It's C H A S, Chaz. No, no, uh, no E. No favors. Just a little boop above the A. No favors. He's French. <laughs> Only some. <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful. Is there anything that you want to say that either one of you want to say to our listeners that we haven't mm. talked about? Hmm. You know, with what I do, I tap into what we're doing as a collective a lot. Like, what is the collective doing? And back in 2020, before everything happened, um, they showed me several years, not just one year. I would tap in for a year. What are we doing for this year? Well, make a long story short, they showed a lot. They showed pieces of the collective that need light shined on them. And one of those spaces was addiction, mental illness, right? Mm -hmm. And that means that the universe, right? Angels, God, all of it is now bringing or magnifying this because we need to really look at it. So and then children were one, our school systems were one, right? Money, like we are needing some of this to collapse, mm -hmm. even belief systems. Well, and it was like the picking of sides too. Yeah, right? don't pick a side. Pick just a side. just, just try to separate yourself from the fear and all of this, the stuff that's going on. But when they talked about mental illness, and it wasn't just addiction, but it it falls right there, right? We have to step forward. It is our job. We are choosing to, you know, and I know that sounds crazy, guys, to think, oh, God, I chose to do this. Nobody chooses that they want to wake up and be a, a junkie or lose their family. No, no one chooses that. And we have to know our experiences are here to help others. 
I feel like a lot of gifted people just like me and Chase have struggled with addiction because we're so freaking confused of what we're doing. We have all these feelings, we have all these experiences and we're sitting in shame, right? And holding ourselves there. No, we are gonna blast it, right? Be so 100% with you and speak, teach people, we're teachers wear that like a badge. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see in the next several years, how mental illness is going front and center center. like this Mm -hmm. for the collective to be, and it gets bad before it gets better guys. So we have to have like a little bit of a hysteria, right? Even cancer. I tapped into that the other day. My last live was about, oh man, we should be able to have all kinds of different modalities of healing. So, so know that there's a lot happening. There's reasons why we have these experiences and, and forward to. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for coming on and being a part of this podcast. I'm, I'm so grateful. I've been so excited about this for a long time. We've had this set up for a little while and through the process, you know, surgery mm-hmm. and stuff like that, we had to put it out. So I have been waiting for this Yay. Uh, with excitement. For us too. Yeah, us too. And you, what you're doing, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. It, it helps the process. Like when we can, when we can take and transmute all of that pain and all of those experiences and transmute that to light, this is what it looks like, what you're doing, right? what we're doing, we can do this. And so knowing that you have been, you know, doing these podcasts, it is so awesome and we want to share it. So I was excited to find out what it is and let everybody know. Um, But yes, thank you so much, Mandy. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks both of you. You're very welcome. So thanks again to all of our listeners for listening to recovery talks podcast, where we, Um, Do a podcast every week on anything, all things recovery, mental health, substance use, now cancer as well as part of that. If you have a topic that you would like to hear or if you would like to be a guest on our podcast, please feel free to reach out. Um, You can get a hold of Jim at jim at mtpeernetwork.org or you can reach out to me at mandy at mtpeernetwork.org. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. (laughs) Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.